And hello, everyone. I'm James Brown. Welcome to the NFL Today, presented by Jeep. And folks, we have reached the quarter mark of the season, and what a turbulent week it's been already. Today's game between the Titans and the Steelers has been postponed to week seven, that after a COVID-19 outbreak in the Titans organization. Ten players and ten team personnel have tested positive since September 24th, forcing the team to close its facility and suspend in-person activities indefinitely. 18 infections have come since playing at Minnesota last Sunday, but the Vikings have not had any positive results. They will play the Texans today. Now, in the wake of that news, the NFL and NFLPA agreed to extend daily testing for all clubs until further notice. The league also outlined steps teams must take after an outbreak before they may resume regular football activities. Then yesterday morning, the NFL postponed the Patriots-Chiefs game after two positive test results. Quarterback Cam Newton and Chiefs practice squad quarterback Jordan Ta'amu were placed on the reserve COVID-19 list. Earlier today, the NFL confirmed pending additional testing, the Patriots Chief game was rescheduled for tomorrow, Monday. We'll have national coverage at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on CBS. And also, Monday Night Football on ESPN. It'll be the Falcons traveling to Green Bay. That game will kick off at 8.50 p.m. Eastern. So, with the postponement of that game, the NFL then shifted today's game between the Bears and the Colts from 1 o'clock to 4.25 p.m. Eastern right here on CBS. So for more on the evolving circumstances surrounding the Patriots-Chiefs game, we bring in our own Tracy Wolfson, who is out in Kansas City. Hello, Tracy. Hello, JB. Well, this stadium was supposed to be filled at least partially with fans all excited and hyped up and ready for this big matchup between the Chiefs and the Patriots. And now we know that that game was, will be postponed until tomorrow now at 7 o'clock Eastern. Now, how did the NFL get to that decision? Yesterday, they went through more testing and it came back. There were no confirmed positive tests for either team as of late last night. And then they did more rapid testing this morning and both teams came back clear. So the NFL officials felt as though it was okay to announce that this game will be played tomorrow night. But still, there will be more testing coming out late this evening. Those results probably will not come back until about 8 to 11 o'clock at night. And then an unprecedented move, they will also test tomorrow morning, which has not happened on a game day yet. Now, the Patriots telling me they will not be leaving for Kansas City until tomorrow morning, which is also an unprecedented move and certainly it deals with some juggling issues for them but the reason why the NFL decided to go with Monday as opposed to Tuesday is if you look at the Chiefs schedule if they played on Tuesday they would have to play three games in 10 days and certainly they did not want that to happen so right now we are just holding down the fort here just staying pat it looks as though this game right now is set for 705 Eastern time but still more hurdles we have to get through before this officially can happen nobody better to put it all in perspective than tracy tracy thank you so much all right folks so joining us now to share the latest news on the tennessee titans situation our nfl today insider at his million dollar in-home studio that would be jason locking for jason well, JB, the NFL and NFLPA investigation into the Titans outbreak, it's in its early stages, but already sources tell me there's concern about potential breaches of protocol. This probe will determine whether the Titans followed all the rules regarding travel restrictions, the intake of a practice squad player, and whether or not PPEs are being worn correctly. Steep penalties are expected. There were no other positive tests Saturday outside of the Titans. The Saints had one false positive but they will play as scheduled. Discussions are ongoing about a potential bubble for the playoffs, if not sooner. Up until last week, those talks focused on the conference championship games. However, sources tell me the competition committee would strongly support going to a bubble sooner. Back in the summer, the NFLPA wasn't hearing it. We'll see if they come around. Expect that to be readdressed shortly. And finally, the NFL is railing against what it sees as widespread complacency around the league regarding these COVID regulations. To that end, on Monday, every owner, coach, and GM will be on a call with the league office. Sources tell me they will be given a grid that will lay out 
the grounds for suspensions and the loss of high draft picks for repeat offenders. JB, I'm told attendance will be taken and the hammer will fall if this behavior continues. Wow, Jason, thank you so very much. Hey, folks, for more insight on how the NFL is dealing with the recent positive test, we welcome in the league's chief medical officer, Alan Sills, who, if you will, has been in the situation room since preseason. Hey, Dr. Sills, the NFL certainly experiencing its first disruption of regular season games due to COVID-19 is what we are seeing this week in regards to positive cases in line with expectations. Well, I think it is, James. We said consistently that we expect to have some positive cases and that our goal here is to prevent any positive case from spreading around the team. So um, this is something we're following those protocols for and following the plans that we laid out and trying to keep everyone as safe as possible. And with that in mind, hey, Doc, from a medical standpoint, when is the earliest that we might expect to see Cam Newton, for instance, available to play again? Well, per our protocols, it depends on whether he develops symptoms or not. If he, if he um, does not have any symptoms, then he would come back either with 10 days from the date of the positive test or if he has two consecutive negative tests uh, after five days' time. If he develops symptoms, then he has to come back with what's called the 10 plus 1 rule, which is the CDC guidance that it's 10 days from the positive test or the onset of symptoms plus one day free of symptoms. So um, I think he would come back on one of those two plans depending on whether or not he develops symptoms along the way. And co-tailing on your first answer as it relates to strict adherence to lead COVID-19 protocols, what have you learned this past week? Any tweaking in order? Well, I think you can expect us to make some updates based on what we're learning around the league. And we said that that'll happen all throughout. We think that, that this is an opportunity for us to learn as we go forward. We know that testing will get better. <clears throat> We'll learn more about spread and transmission, update those protocols to try to keep everyone as safe as possible. So we're taking a really, really deep dive into the Tennessee situation, trying to learn all that we can for the benefit of everyone. Can only imagine what you're going through right now as well. But Dr. Stills, thank you so much for your insight and expertise. Thank you very much. So to my guys, the guys, if you will, colleagues from the fraternity, Boomer, your thoughts. You know what? Uh, the NHL, the NBA and Major League Baseball all had to deal with these things. And the NFL was watching from a distance. Yep. Hey, at the end of the day, we as a country have to fight through this. We have to take the protocol seriously. Don't take anything for granted. But we have to continue to move forward. Shutting everything down, I think, would be a huge huge mistake and an overreaction. That's right. Let me commend the NFL for taking the necessary steps. This is what they're supposed to do. You know, I want fans to keep in mind that, you know, you could be upset that your favorite player might not be playing. He might have to sit out like Cam Newton or a game has been moved that you were excited about. But as your team is fighting for victories each week, people are fighting for their lives. So as we all are here collectively as a team fighting COVID-19, we're going to do this together. We just got to tighten up and make sure we do it right. And what's it require sacrifice? Now, if we've learned anything from the other two leagues, as you said, Boone, we should have. The bubble is the way to go to put it in within the respective cities, isolate them, keep them in a manner where you can monitor the situations. And the only thing I, was, the other thing I would say is the competitive balance that we need to have. I'd like to find a way, if we're going to eliminate some of these games and lose some of these games, make sure we play the divisional games because that's the fairest way of coming out of a playoff in terms of seeding teams. Mm -hmm. I think if they had a quarantine, I think that's a small price to pay for all the NFL players and everything that's involved. So if it comes down to that, I can't imagine some players saying, oh, I don't want to do that. Right. And the other thing is, too, Boomer, you said it. That there's got to be a COVID officer around all the time at the team's complexes, on the plane, in the hotel, to make sure everybody is diligent and doing what they should do. Individual and collective responsibility key in this regard, for sure, as you and Boomer mentioned. Well, Dallas is the number one offense in all of football, but Dak and the boys have won only one game. One hour from now, we'll see the high-flying boys take on Baker Mayfield and the Browns, who are over 500 for the first time in six years. And speaking of numbers, Alvin Kamara had nearly 200 total yards the last time he hit the field. Today, he and the Saints hit the road to battle the Lions up in Detroit. And it doesn't seem to matter where Russell Wilson plays. He's off to the best start of any quarterback in league history. 14 touchdown passes in his first three games, all wins. We'll see if that holds up on the longest road trip of any team this season as Seattle flies down to Miami. It has indeed been a long, strange trip just to get here. But week four has arrived and will hopefully continue the run of high-scoring, fourth-quarter, crazy finishes we've seen so far. Whatever it brings, we've got you covered from the streets to our set right here on the one and only Book Ford Talk. 
Fox NFL Sunday pregame show brought to you by the Ford F-Series, the official truck of the NFL. Come on in and stay a while, folks. I'm Kurt Menefee, joined by Terry, Howie, Michael, Jimmy Johnson, who will be with us in just a second from down in the Florida Keys. And guys, you know, oftentimes, I want to thank my Anthony Mackie for doing the open here. A lot of times, actors, they want to promote something, their movie, their TV show. Mackey says all he wants to do is encourage people to register to vote. The election is 30 days Amen. from now. He oh, says God. go to IamAMan.vote, register today, and make sure you show up November 3rd. Good job by Anthony Mackey yep. there. It has been a strange week, obviously, nationally. COVID has uh, appeared mm -hmm. maybe in a brighter spotlight than we've seen, and the NFL has not been immune to that at all. In fact, the schedule this Sunday looks a little bit different than it did even a week ago because this past Tuesday, we learned that several members of the Tennessee Titans, players and personnel, had tested positive for COVID-19. As the week went on, more positive tests were confirmed, with the latest total being 20 members of the organization, including a player and coach just this morning. So the league postponed this afternoon's scheduled game with Pittsburgh, moving it back to week seven. As for the Vikings, who played the Titans last week, hopefully uh, they have had no positive tests so far. They hope that continues as they are taking extra tests this morning and making sure they're taking extra precautions along the way. And then just yesterday, the bombshell that the Patriots Cam Newton had tested positive made it impractical to put the entire team on an airplane and fly them to Kansas City for their game with the Chiefs, who also had a practice player test positive. That game has officially been moved to tomorrow night at 7 p.m. And then while most of you were sleeping, the Saints had a false positive test for one of their players. It triggered a scare that put that game against the Lions this afternoon in jeopardy. But a few hours ago, it was all given a go ahead to proceed as scheduled. So that game will take place at the top of the hour right here on Fox. But right now, we want to bring in our NFL insider, Jay Glazer, to try and help us kind of clear some of this up, Jay. And first of all, I mentioned that the league just announced the Patriots and Chief game will be Monday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Is that deal set in stone? Yeah, Kurt, it's been quite a week now. Here's what needs to happen tomorrow is tomorrow morning. Both the Patriots and the Chiefs, they will undergo tests once again, but rapid tests. As long as those are all negative, then the Patriots can get on their plane and go to Kansas City same day, and they will, in fact, play tomorrow night. Right. We have to wait for those tests tomorrow. What about Cam Newton, then? So Cam Newton, he's in a different boat than everybody else. He's still positive, and what I'm told is that he's asymptomatic, which means he has no symptoms. It's different to return if you have symptoms as opposed to no symptoms. What they need for him is two consecutive negative tests in order for him to return we just don't know when those negative tests are going to happen. If it start, happens later on, on this week, he could possibly be available next weekend. Wow, that's a big surprise. Mm -hmm. And let's go to the Titans because this all started with them. Is the NFL looking into why there was such a huge outbreak down there in Tennessee? And not just the NFL, but the NFLPA as well. They actually flew down this week to investigate, and they're taking a really deep dive. They're even looking at security footage to see if there's any lapses down there in protocol. And if there was, expect heavy penalties for the Titans. All right, so what happened with the Saints last night? How about this? They got quite a scare. They landed in Detroit late last night. They find out that they're starting fullback test positive for COVID. Well, then they went and got other players that were around this player, and they tested them up until midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. Then all those tests end up coming back negative, so they're all in the clear. But that guy, Sean Payton, told me, look, if we're without our starting fullback, that affects our offense quite a bit because we don't have a backup fullback on this team. All right, that's all in the past. Right. What about the future? What's the NFL's plan going forward? So the NFL is actually going to have what we're going to call an impromptu owners meeting tomorrow. Owners, head coaches, general managers, and just remind teams, look, we expected something was going to happen this year, but we've got to make sure that we stay diligent and follow our protocols. They want to make sure everybody remains safe. All right, thank you, Jay, for clearing a lot of that up for us. Jimmy Johnson will be joining us live from the Florida Keys in just a bit, but I want to talk here in studio, Howie. You know, we take a look at this. We shouldn't be shocked. I mean, I think we look around the country, around the world. This is what's going on everywhere. It's just come to the NFL's doorstep now. You know, I, I think we all got lulled into a false sense of security. I, I know I did. I, I think it was inevitable this was going to happen. The biggest surprise is that it didn't happen earlier. You know, Pittsburgh and Tennessee are rescheduled for week seven. If testing continues to be good for both Kansas City and New England, they'll play tomorrow night. This is going to happen again, and I, I think at some point you can only shuffle the schedule so much. I think the league needs to look at possibly abbreviating the schedule down to 14 games, focusing on divisional games and conference games and having that cushion on the back end for makeup games. They're talking about maybe bubbling right now. I don't think the players and, you know, the sheer volume of players, coaches, families, the whole thing, that's tough to do. But I do believe bubbling in the playoffs is a reality. 
You know what, Jimmy Johnson, we keep talking about what if, what if, what if. What if they play Monday night? What if it's not until a couple of weeks later? We talk so often about players and coaches being creatures of habit. How do you try and keep a team together and keep them focused as the season goes on? Yeah, Kurt, you're exactly right. You know, coaches and players, you know, they're so accustomed to a routine. Well, this is anything but a routine. And like I always said, we just scratched the surface. There's going to be more test positive as we go along. Networks, coaches, players, they're going to have to continually adapt as this season goes on. As far as teams and, and players, you know, not practicing, We've seen older veteran players not practice throughout the week and still play on Sunday. So it's workable, but it'll, it'll give an edge to the veteran teams. Now, as far as New England, I did talk to New England. They had all their practice work in already. And so they went on Zoom. They had their meetings. They showed the practice tapes on Zoom. They're ready to play with the exception they're missing their starting quarterback who was playing really well. And, and I know, Jimmy, from uh, the only time we ever you know, missed a week of gains was for 9-11 in my career, which was uh, a, an incredibly horrible time. And, but to come back and play then was something we felt brought the, com the country together. Now this is actually keeping people apart, which is such a difference. But I, it, I think this is a new way of life. I think this was inevitable, like you said. It's just something you're going to have to adapt to. But at the end of the day, you have to keep in mind that health is the most important lesson that you can learn and I know there are a lot of different things saying the way it affects your body the future they don't know so I think the biggest thing is to understand that athletes are human athletes are going to have things like this happen you don't know who guys around his family or all these different things and you can't bubble I don't think realistically no the NFL team for six seven months guys have families guys have you know kids and loved ones that they want to be around but in the foreseeable for future, we just have to adapt to what we where we are right now in the best way that we can. And, and there are going to be more tests. I don't think it's surprising yeah. to anyone, and they've been expecting.